My name is Pratna Michael. I'm from Madalwani. How are you doing at this point in the day? <laughs> We are kind of busy uh, rehearsing for the next few shows mm -hmm. that are up and, and uh, we're going to have a show in the Netherlands, which is kind of a warm-up show. Uh -huh. Then afterwards we have a festival in Germany mm -hmm. uh, uh, on the next day, supposedly, mm -hmm. and then we're going to Finland uh, oh. and so there's going to be another festival. Great, so pretty tight schedule for the next couple of weeks, that's great. And um, new album, My God Given Right, is your 15th studio album and it's absolutely amazing and combines your entire musical career into one major release. So how excited are you about this album? We are pretty excited because of all the uh, resentments and the uh, criticism that, that came back from the people. I've, I've had just one person to tell me mm -hmm. uh, this ain't a good album. All the other people say, no, it's amazing and, and it's extra special and it's a lot better than a few others. Mm -hmm. By whatever means that may be, I don't know, you know, but it has something and uh, there's something about it. Mm -hmm. I, I can't put a finger on, on what that is exactly, but I think it's more positive, it's more open, mm -hmm. it's more accessible. I always said that's maybe an album that housewives would buy, you know, <laughs> rather than another one of our albums, maybe this one would be better for them or they would like it or be able to deal with it better or whatever. And, and it's, it's got something, it's got some magic about it. Mm -hmm. Great. And I still didn't know, I only say this because of what other people told me. Fair enough, fair enough. And I mean, the album is considered by the band as a sort of a back to the roots album, you know, while you still incorporate some more mod modern elements. So, I mean, what I really like about the album is the way you've managed to balance that melodic nature of the songs and then, you know, powerful, powerful stru song structures. The guitars are more aggressive. There's an overall darker feel. So um, was this planned in advance or, you know, was it more spontaneous, the writing process of this album? Well, everything was a big coincidence because uh, we've been working the same way. It was just we had the demos we had mm -hmm. and then the uh, the strongest tracks were uh, selected to be on a new album, which would be the God Given Right later on. Then. But mm -hmm. the only thing that was really different right from the start was that our producer, he had a, a particular vision about it. Mm -hmm. yeah? He said right from the start, uh, I'd like to go at it a bit more 80s way, whatever that means, sound-wise, production-wise, whatever. And so he got some gadgets and um, little machinery from the 80s and tube stuff, mm -hmm. uh, converters, digital and, and analog converters, uh, equalizers, uh, compressors and other things, right? Mm -hmm. um, that make that sound that you hear on that record. So it sounds so much 80s uh, right from the technology that was used back mm -hmm. then like the best stuff you could possibly get and, and he just tried to get a few of these devices and put them into the loop of what we recorded and that's actually what you get to hear. I mean, we, we have a digital product, mm -hmm. but uh, most of the things in between that got recorded and whatever were analog as can be. Mm -hmm. And that's just what you have on that CD and later on on the vinyl that you can also buy if you want to. Mm -hmm. It's the closest thing to 80s recording, you know. Absolutely. Great. So, I mean, be it My God Given Right or If God Loves Rock and Roll, every song is written on a grand scale. The riffs are catchy and memorable. Guitar solos are at a grand level. So, what sort of approach did you keep in mind while you were writing this album? Uh, really none. It was just that, you know, Darius uh, obviously is the main songwriter on this album and, and he decided to to do these tracks that he's done and then these tracks were picked. I mean, he also had other tracks, right? But the producer picked these more positive tracks mm -hmm. and uh, Andy, he sure wouldn't mind. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't come up and say, I want more tragic and dark and uh, mystic, melancholic material on this record. Mm -hmm. He didn't say that. 
And so that's, uh, well, thanks to him or his fault, you know, that this album comes across the way it does. And yeah, it's like a lot more positive than the recent outputs we have. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Call it what you like, you know, but there's something about it. Okay, great. And I mean, uh, as you said, the producer chose the ones that would form the final track list. So was it difficult, I mean, to, you know, select the best tracks out of, you know, 33, 34 songs that you guys had written up for the album? We had lots of good material and then uh, he he wanted to try with a few tracks that, that didn't quite work out the way as planned. Mm -hmm. And uh, But in, in exchange for that, other things that were not deemed so great or whatever turned out super great and a lot better than was expected. And so uh, take it any way you want, mm -hmm. it still all was a big coincidence even though we had great material we had good tracks uh, enough to choose from and whatever he just said we have enough tracks for a real great album mm -hmm. whatever that album may be like afterwards but mm -hmm. I have a certain idea of how to do it mm -hmm. and I, I think he's kind of proud of this because it's uh, it's, it's a positive Halloween album mm -hmm. definitely um, great and I mean 30 years, it has been 30 years since your first EP release and you know the band created an anniversary album to mark not only your third decade of you know being in the metal field but your 15th studio album as well so what is the secret to Halloween? What keeps you guys going? Your month? Well, <laughs> I think uh, none of us would really like to work something else, like a painter or a movie score artist or whatever. I mean, some people may have the energy, some people may have not. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I'm, I'm somebody, I'm, I'm just like little dirty rock and roll guitarist who pretends to play a good guitar in the <laughs> band, you know. Uh -huh. Mainly, I'm a songwriter, and I, I just want to write songs as good as I can. Sometimes, you know, I don't have that many ideas, sometimes I have many ideas, mm -hmm. and that's just something I want to bring across, you know, and then you you got to try. I, I wouldn't know what else I could do, you know. I think I'd be very good at sitting on a park bench, you know, staring into the sky, if I didn't have to uh, do for my living, you know. and. There's something I got to do, and this is obviously like the thing I can do best in accordance with what I want. Like, yeah. it's it's pretty stressy. Yeah. There's a few things you have to do. You you have little private life and whatever, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. maybe you get a reward for like I don't know. I don't want to have any children, so I have my songs. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. So so what would you do if you weren't doing what you do right now, what is it? Would you like to sit on a park bench and just relax or is there something I'd else like, that I'd you're interested in? I'd like to be a, a billionaire's offspring, you know, and healthy, <laughs> you know, and then do whatever I wish, but that's not the case, you know, and still I haven't amassed enough money, you know, that I would have to be able to say I, I can call it quits, you know, and, and, and everything else behind me, I don't worry. Uh, that's not the case. I have to work something. Mm -hmm. And be it what it was, you know, like I could have done this or that, but now it's too late, I think. There's too many painters around, there's too many <laughs> there's too many reporters, you know, who have like a very steady hold and connections and whatever. And I think I, I couldn't work against any established that, one, that. you know, who, who, who does a job that he or she ever wanted. You know, but they there's all only got one more. Halloween, Michael. <laughs> there's only Halloween and it's very hard. You know, if you wanted to do that, you would probably faint after a week, <laughs> even if you try. That's true, that's true. But anyway, I mean, looking back on your three decade long career, has there been like an absolute standout moment for you, one that you cannot forget, even if you tried? It was a few we had. Um, we had the uh, Monsters of Rock in 87, 88, we had, uh, we had the Donnington, we had, uh, um, believe it or not, the uh, Woodstock in Poland oh, recently, oh. where there were obviously some like 750,000 people. Mm -hmm. the, the official numbers were 360,000. Mm 
which mm -hmm. is kind of like enough, but the way it looked, it must have been a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. It was just like a sea of people, and we were playing. <laughs> And there was just another huge Polish band playing after us in the middle of the night. They started at 1, 1 1.30 or whatever, and we didn't want to go out at that time. Mm -hmm. So we, we had a blast. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. That's or, amazing. you know, any other interesting country you come to, like where the people are happy and friendly and, and enjoy the show, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Enjoy. Say again? Do you have any plans to bring the band down to India sometime? Well, I wish, uh, but from what I heard, we we once had a had an offer that 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 went down as well. Sometimes it's a matter of uh, organizing things, mm -hmm. right? And uh, <clears throat> sometimes promoters they 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 don't really know what it takes, you know, to do something with a band. Right. Sometimes it's just technical stuff. It's like there's no toilets or there's nothing to eat or, mm -hmm. you know, the tell is too far away or something yeah. or he or she wants to do something mm -hmm. and then um, things fall apart and they, they, they are left with less money than they thought and then they got to pay the bands and whatever. Mm -hmm. We had one offer that, that, that kind of uh, didn't make it, you know, yeah. Some, uh, four years ago or something. Okay. And you know, we got this interview, so it seems there's someone doing something. Or, or did you call Nuclear Blast and, and wanted to do this? Yeah, we. I mean, we'd love to have you guys down here. It'd be special. <laughs> when I was 15, I had some two Indian sisters who lived in Hamburg. Okay. And they 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 made it a fashion, you know, to to grin and look me up at the uh, subway station when I went to school and when I came back from school because I thought they 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 said I was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> they were there every day until you know I went and have a coffee with them. You know. <laughs> wow. Well, and, they, I'm pretty sure a lot of Indian women would say the same thing over here. So you should come. <laughs> oh my. Great. Um, all right, Michael, I'm going to wind up. So what? how would you describe Halloween's new album in one sentence? It's a lot more accessible, a lot more open, and a lot more positive uh, than other outputs we've done. And I want to put it close to the Keeper One, because the Keeper One was anything but the aggressivity that we had on the uh, Words of Jericho or the mini album. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, was a, it was a heavy cut, you know. Uh, people said, now you've turned commercial. Mm -hmm. Back then, when we did the Keeper One, the Keeper One was really harmless in comparison to, to the Words of Jericho, which was crazy, wild, brutal yeah. and direct. And so I think something of the keeper one goes for the God-given right. I don't know how else to express it. We've, mm -hmm. we've done a few albums in between. We, we try to be true and do this and that. Mm -hmm. And this album, the way it is, came along by coincidence. Okay. And that's usually okay. the way it is. The, the keeper one also was some kind of coincidence. We, we planned so much. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there were these tracks on there and it wasn't so long and and there were these tracks and those tracks, and basically back then I was a little bit afraid that people would uh, throw uh, rotten tomatoes at us or something, <laughs> because, yeah. of, you know, yeah. it is heavy, it is cool, and, you know, it was a milestone, mm -hmm. but it didn't feel like that to us immediately, the producers told us. Yeah. They said, this is something serious, this is something to be proud of. And we were like, oh yeah, really? Uh, is it heavy enough? Uh, mm -hmm. You know? And so it's a bit like this with this record. Excellent. But from what I've heard, I mean, it's been receiving crazy reviews and really, really good reviews. So, that's yeah. What's happening. And that's what's making me feel so good about it. 